what do you kind of think about what he can bring to this group? Uh, ve a veteran leader. Uh, he's, I think Alfred has been in the NBA for eight plus seasons. Uh, it's crazy that he and I were teammates. Uh, <laughs> his, his rookie season in Orlando. So just really good to have him uh, with our group. Uh, he's a hard worker. Uh, he's knowledgeable. He's tough. Um, he can run. He can run the offense, and uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to get him on the floor and get him going. What do you remember about him as a teammate? Of his, what he was like to play with? He's extremely mature, coming in as a rookie. Um, he's a, he was a leader from the very start. He still is, and you know he just he picked things up quick. He played with toughness. He's he's got his teammates involved. He's good, really good defender, and um, a lot of coaching future coaching qualities in him is, is what I see. And the hair was a little different back then too, right? A little bit, just a little bit. It's <laughs> a little different, a little different, yeah. When he played here, I remember he talked to basketball all the time. You get a sense from him when you were a teammate that he's just like a like a basketball junkie, like he's just really into the game overall. For sure, for sure. He comes from a sports family. I know his mom and dad pretty well from spending a year with him in Orlando. Uh, obviously, Elford being here from, from New Orleans, um, this is this is fun. For, it's fun for him. It's fun for us. We're excited that we could give him a, an opportunity with our group. And um, to your point, he's a sponge. He, he picks everything up pretty quickly. Uh, as far as Sunday goes, will that look like Monday's game in that 20 minutes range for the starters? Uh, it'll be close. It'll be close. You know, I haven't talked about it yet with our with our group, but you know, 20, maybe 22 to 25 at, at the most. Yeah. And are most of the regulars planning to play? So far, so far, that's the plan. Yeah. The other day you talked about um, in four or five pick and rolls, it allows maybe smaller guys to be help defenders and not the big to track Zion uh, in those situations. Do you think that sort of chess game has become more common in the league where they're trying to manipulate who the help defender is, maybe putting small in, the, in those positions? For sure. I, I think when you. You look at the end of game scenarios, especially with some of the top teams, they're just hunting, they're hunting a matchup. And their primetime players are looking at, they're watching film, they're trying to figure out who can I take advantage of offensively. I think it's becoming more of a part of, of especially in the game scenarios. Yeah, it, it seems like teams used to maybe attack the the weaker defender like directly in one-on-one -on -one situations, and now it seems like, no, maybe we'll take the stronger defender away from the paint and then we'll leave the weaker defender in a help situation. Like, it, it, Do you feel like that's more of a trend these days? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a mix and match. You know, you, you have some teams that will put their best defender on – their opponent's uh, weaker offensive player. And they'll go roam and go help and force the ball to go to that player. You have some teams that do the opposite. And it's, it's just preference. It's what you work on. It's kind of what that team, uh, what your principles are and your concepts are. But we're seeing a little bit of both, for sure. Willie, how did you treat practice today, considering today was supposed to be a game day? We tried to treat it similar to a game. Um, split the teams up as even as we could and got up and down and it was competitive really fun practice guys are going hard they're competing at a high level they're picking up a lot of our concepts and uh, they're applying it to in-game situations and you brought up in the game situations how much has that been a focus for the past few weeks knowing that was a source of frustration last year it's definitely a focus it's a it's a focus starting with me you know just talking to the team and having a responsibility of knowing that's an area where I need to improve, uh, and it's an area that we we should we, we have to get on the floor and work on constantly, getting into getting to our spots, getting the ball to the, the, the right guy's hands at the right time. How what ways do you want to kind of improve in those situations? The more we can identify what our problems are, and the more we can identify, you know, how how to solve them. And for me, it's just getting out in front of it. Letting our team know this is where we are, and, we, and this is an area that we, if we grow, if we improve in this area, with all the other things that we do well, you know that might the margins may be two, three, four more wins this season. How much does, can Dejounte help in those situations specifically? I think he, he can help a ton. Um, I think last season he might he might have hit three or four game winners. Balls in his hands, he gets to his spot, he raises up, and he's he's confident in knocking those shots down. So. We'll rely on him, but it's, it's going to be a group effort of us 
moving the needle in that area. For, for you, what's the balance between letting him see what's happening on the court versus play calling in those end of you know game situations? Yeah, you know, you just for, for me, it's it's really about creating that environment, that in the game environment. That may be one set, but there's so many reads out of one set that guys can get to. So it's exhausting all of those options, trying to get a play started at the right time, knowing what shots we want to get, knowing what we want to stay away from, and, and constantly talking about those, those different concepts. Your, your first year here, you guys played San Antonio in that play-in game. DeJounte was on that team. You know, what, what was he asked to do? What was his role in that San Antonio team compared to what you saw him do in Atlanta? How are those two things different um, You know, when you look back at that? I think San Antonio, he, he was more of you know, their clear-cut point guard, leader. Um, they played a lot through him, and he he made that team go. And they were extremely successful because they trusted in him, and, and he kind of had free free reign to do what he needed to do on that team. I, th I thought when he went to Atlanta, it was a balance. It was a balance of there's times where I have the ball and I can determine what we do offensively. There's times where I have to be able to play off Trey Young, and I thought he did a really good job of doing that. And then defensively, he, he's always been solid uh, since he's coming to NBA. And in this situation, which one is it now? I think it, I think because of his experience of doing both, it, it'll be more of a balance this season where he definitely will have the ball, but he knows that he's got a ton of weapons around him. And so there's times Zion have it, there's times B.I. have it. Uh, and we're going to need him to do both, be, be the leader that he is with the ball and be ready to make plays when he's off the ball a bit. He said multiple times, I feel like my job is to just make everything easier for everybody yeah. else. How much do you get a sense of how much he's in? It just seems like he's really enjoying the position that he's in now in terms of situation of being able to kind of set up people for open shots. It's so true. It's who he, who he's, who he is. It's who he's been since he's gotten here. And uh, he, he's making every, everybody's job easier. He's a, he's a really good communicator. Um, he wants this. He, he wants our team to be better. He wants to be a major part of it, which he is. And, you know, you just need more guys like DeJounte, guys that just buy into what we're trying to do. We're all open, honest. He's holding himself, his teammates, coaching staff, all of us accountable. And uh, I think that's, that's what really good teams to great teams, that's what they all do. Have you seen him kind of strike that balance? He's talked about, you know, understanding that, hey, these guys have won before I got here. ZNBI were the faces before I got here, but knowing that you guys really want him to play an important role on and off the court. I think if it first starts with, you know, he, he has to be himself. That's what's gotten him to this point. Um, that's that's how he's been able to be successful in all, on the teams that he's been on. And then to your point, it's, it's a balance in that. It's a balance of, do I have the ball in my hands? What, what do I do offensively when I don't have the ball? Defensively, for everybody on our team, there's a standard that we want to set, and we don't want to drop below that. And just keep communicating, keep growing your relationships with you know, all, all of our players and, and staff, and you know, sky's the limit for our, our group. In, in that Orlando game, you guys were out-rebounded, but you won the possession battle in large part due to steals and, and turning the ball over less. Is, is that going to have to be the blueprint um, knowing that you might be smaller than a lot of teams? I don't know if that's the blueprint. I think we will have some games like that. We we want to win the rebounding battle. Um, we want to turn teams over. We want to get deflections and steals and ignite our break. So we want to be good at both. And uh, we, But we do understand there will be nights where we come up short maybe in the rebounding battle. And um, hopefully we can gain extra possessions by turning teams over. Thank you. Thank you. Man, what's it like just to be back home, just to be back with the team again? Oh, it feels good. Um, glad to be back home, back to be back in the NBA facility. Um, it feels good, man. Happy to be here. And what has kind of been the message from the coaching staff, what they want to see with you, from you with this group? Uh, just do what I do, um, getting the paint, making plays for others, uh, bringing leadership, um, you know, just things that I see on the floor, just trying to bring guys along as well. Didn't realize that uh, you and Willie were teammates until he just said that in Orlando. Yeah, uh, exactly. what, do you, what do you remember about uh, Vet Willie Green? Uh, Vet Willie Green, uh, just a professional. You know, come to work every day, put his work in. Uh, he was always giving us, you know, words of wisdom and stuff like that. Um, I didn't think he'd be a coach, but I'm not surprised at, at the same time if that makes sense. Um, yeah, a lot of the guys on the team ain't even know that that we played together, but it's been good.
you, uh, I mean, obviously had a previous run like with this franchise. Where, where are the Pelicans at right now compared to you know the time you spent with them a couple of years ago? Just as a, as a franchise, big picture. Uh, I think it's you know uh, it's been moving forward. Um, I think we was in a good spot at that time. They had just come off that big playoff series in Portland when I came here last time, and uh, this time they was able to make the playoffs. But obviously, um, you know they're moving forward. They got a lot of good pieces here. Uh, I think they'll be a threat in the West for sure. Yeah, for what are some more of your initial impressions of the team, like Zion, Brandon, whoever you want to talk about, mention? Oh, these guys are really talented. Um, it's a lot of talent out there. Uh, you know, Zion, everybody knows what he does. B.I. is good. C.J. Um, can score from everywhere. Uh, even other guys, Hawk. Uh, you know, Trey's been out with a hamstring, but, you know, he's, he's very talented, too. There's a lot of players on this team, man, that can, that can really uh, make an impact on winning. Um, I think it's going to be tough to find minutes, but it's a lot of good players. It's a good problem to have. You yeah, mentioned you mentioned how um, when he played Willie Green, you didn't necessarily think he was going to be a, a coach. He actually said that he thinks, obviously this is something down the road for you, but he, he thinks that you might be a future coach. Is that something that you've thought about, that you want to do that someday? Uh, I think it's something uh, I think I can do. I know I could do. A, a lot of people tell me that, but uh, I ain't really focused on that right now. Kind of like where my feet at right now, and that's being a player. You have a, a, a lot of experience in the NBA. Just what do you make of uh, Willie's coaching style in, in general and how this camp has been? It's been good. It's been really good. Um, you know, obviously he's a player, so, you know, he understands what guys are going through, bodies and stuff like that. He's very um, – does a good job communicating with guys, um, defensive-minded. Uh, it's been good. I think Willie's doing a great job. Um, I think he's going to do a great job this season too. Well, what's it been like – because you kind of seen it all right as a former lottery pick, started a whole bunch of games. Now you're taking an unconventional route to try to prove you can still be in the league. What's the, what's that process been like trying to, you know, do it in a different way? Oh, uh, man, um, you know, just taking it day by day, bro. Uh, coming in with the same approach as I did when I, you know, first started coming in, be a pro, get my work in. Uh, when I get an opportunity, try to do my best with that opportunity. Um, and just being available, whatever they may need, you know, whether it be a leadership role, whether it be, you know, being on the court. Uh, bringing along young guys, uh, whatever it is. So just trying to keep that same approach, just being a pro's pro. Do you think the, the league has changed in terms of what it needs from you in terms of your skill set, or do you think it's more you can hammer your strengths and, and who you were? Uh, I think it just depends on the system. Uh, whatever, you know, depending on the team, uh, every team is different. I think here I can do a little bit of both, uh, possibly, but um, that's not for me to decide. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I come in every day, just put my work in. If you give an opportunity, then you know, try and take advantage of the opportunity. And Effort, what would you say is the biggest thing that's different about you since the last time you were here in New Orleans uh, about your game or okay. anything? I think just being wiser, man. Just seeing a lot, lot more things. I've been um, in playoff series since I've been here. So just learning that stuff, playing under other guys, under coaches. So, you know, pulling different things from them. Uh, I think I'm just, just smarter.